Welcome back to Force on Linux channel, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been working with Linux for a while, you've probably heard the term distro hopping or distro hopper. But what exactly does this mean? Why do people do it? And should you think twice if you find yourself becoming a distro hopper? This video will cover these questions in depth. I'm Michael from Force on Linux channel and now let's dive in. To start, let's clarify what distro hopping is. Distro hopping describes the phenomenon where Linux users frequently switch between different Linux distributions. The motivation behind this can vary greatly and sometimes has psychological roots. Many users begin distro hopping to find the Linux distribution that best suits them. The vast array of available distros makes choosing one difficult. Since each distribution has unique features, some users make trying out new distros as a hobby. They install and test various versions to find the perfect distribution. For others, it's a way to learn about new technologies and understand different systems. Some distros are designed for desktop stability and security, while others focus on innovation and the latest technology. Distro hopping provides a direct way to experience different approaches and techniques used in various Linux distributions. Technically, distro hopping isn't always easy. Each distro has its quirks, like a unique package manager, different directory structures and specific configurations. Linux desktop users also need to account for installing and configuring their preferred apps to make the system usable day to day. Sometimes specific hardware support is required, which only certain distributions provide. Another technical factor is the difference in desktop environments. A Linux distribution can run GNOME, Cinnamon, KDE, XFCE or other interfaces or all of them. Each environment has its user flow and customization options. For many users, choosing the right desktop environment is as important as picking the distro itself. I'm one of those people, by the way. One main motivation for distro hopping is the search for the perfect distro. For most people, perfection is subjective and varies greatly. Some users want simplicity while others seek maximum control and customization. Some prefer stability and long-term support while others favor a distro that stays up to date with the latest releases. Linux distros like Fedora and Arch Linux attract users who want the latest software and features. Debian and Ubuntu LTS, however, offer long-term support, which is excellent for stability, security and planning. For distro hoppers, making a final choice can be difficult as they continually discover new features or design changes that influence their preferences. There's also the risk of constantly feeling like there might be an even better distro out there. This phenomenon is often referred today as FOMO. That stands for fear of missing out. And by the way, which tech enthusiast wants to admit they haven't tried something new or cutting edge, especially among like-minded people? Distro hopping has both positive and negative. On the positive side, it offers an exciting way to experience Linux in all its diversity. By experimenting with different distros, users gain a deep understanding of how Linux works. They learn about different package managers, file systems and desktop acquiring skills that make them knowledgeable users. However, distro hopping has also downsides. It can be very time consuming. Each time a new distro is installed, software, settings and personal data must be restored. This process can be tedious and disruptive to daily routines if it's not automated with scripts. There is also the risk that a user might never really be satisfied with the distro, leading to ongoing frustration and a perpetual search for something better. Here again, FOMO can play a big role. One driving factor behind distro hopping is the fascination with new features. Some distros are known for their innovative developments. Fedora, for example, frequently tests new technologies and offers the latest GNOME version. Arch Linux provides access to the most up-to-date software through a rolling release model. 
Ubuntu and its derivatives like Linux Mint offer user-friendly stable systems that receive regular security updates and are refreshed with a new version every two years. These differences are particularly attractive to users who always want to try the latest and greatest. Many distro hoppers want to engage directly with developments and appreciate using systems that lay the groundwork for future innovations. It's about having the newest of the new. Another reason for distro hopping lies in the different communities each distro fosters. Communities not only offer technical support, but also create a platform for sharing insights and discussions specific to the distro, creating a sense of belonging. For distro hoppers, communities are an essential source of information about current developments and trends. Each Linux distribution has its own culture and interactions can be very greatly depending on the distro. Ubuntu, for example, is known for its helpful, beginner-friendly community. Arch Linux has a technically-oriented community with extensive documentation which appeals especially to advanced users. These differences add to the charm of distro hopping as each distro's community requires varying levels of technical knowledge. The more advanced the requirements, the more elitist the community might seem. The time spent constantly switching distros can impact a user's workflow. Installing a new distro takes time. And after the operating system is set up, additional steps like installing software, configuring and customizing are required. These can disrupt productive workflows and sometimes even cause projects to stall. Although discovering new features is exciting, the search for the perfect distro can detract from the actual purpose of working on a computer. Some distro hoppers may eventually realize that frequent switching leads to an inefficient work style. As a result, they choose to stick with one distro and optimize it rather than reinstalling over and over. The decision, however, often depends on how many computers a user can dedicate to distro hopping. Secondary or tertiary machines don't need the same attention as a primary workstation. Hardware compatibility is another factor that plays a role in distro hopping. Although it might sound surprising, not all Linux distributions support every piece of hardware equally. For instance, Ubuntu and Fedora offer broad hardware support out of the box, making them popular among many users. Other distros like Arch Linux or Gentoo rely on the user customization, which can affect hardware compatibility. For users with specific hardware needs, distro hopping can help them to find the best support. Some distros integrate proprietary drivers by default, while others only offer open source drivers. These differences influence users' choice and motivate them to try out various distributions. This is also why Debian now offers the option to install proprietary drivers during setup. A noteworthy aspect here is the support of brand new hardware. The newer the hardware, the newer the Linux kernel should be to support it effectively. Distro hopping ultimately comes down to personal preferences and interest. For Linux enthusiasts, it's a great way to explore the system in all its aspects and engage deeply with its various features. For others who need a stable desktop system for daily work, distro hopping is less appealing. Some users find that distro hopping helps them achieve an optimal mix of stability, performance and functionality. Others realize they are satisfied with a specific distro long term and stick with it because they've grown to appreciate its strength. Distro hopping should be seen as a hobby that fosters knowledge and understanding. It's a way to experience the versatility and flexibility of Linux. Many users are deeply involved in a community, sharing their experiences, which makes distro hopping a social activity as well. I used to be a distro hopper, especially when I first switched to Linux in 2003. That was a different era though. Distros like Ubuntu or Linux Mint, which are great for beginners, didn't exist yet and the process to switch was much more complicated. I started with SUSE Linux, but often switched between SUSE, Mandrake and Red Hat. Red Hat was the first to go because I didn't quite like GNOME back then. That left SUSE and Mandrake with KDE Desktop. Over the years, I tested many other distros.
Looking back, this dropping was a learning journey for me, but I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. If you're looking for something that just works, Linux Mint, Debian or Ubuntu is an excellent choice. These are solid options for beginners, especially Ubuntu and Linux Mint. If you want more after getting familiar with these, try distro hopping with virtual machines, VMs or on a secondary machine. If you do it on your main computer, make sure to back up all your data. Developing a data backup and restore workflow will save time as it can be automated with scripts, though that requires learning to scripting. If you find yourself satisfied with Debian, Linux Mint or Ubuntu and everything works, feel free to stick with it. There is no way to feel inadequate for not using Arch, Gen2 or Slackware. Trying those is great if you want to, but it's clear that the majority doesn't or those distros would have the largest communities, which they don't have, if you ask me. So here's my suggestion. Start with beginner-friendly distros. If you want more, explore distros in VMs or secondary machines. Let me know in the comments how you feel about distro hopping and share your experiences with it. I'm interested. If you're up for more Linux content, now it's a perfect time to subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and boost it and with the notification bell on, you'll know when there is fresh content. To take things further, you can support my project with a YouTube channel membership. And this is a good opportunity to say a big thank you to all our existing supporters. Thank you for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. Take care, see you soon, peace.